Hi there, I am here to demonstrate the transverse section of arm. So here you can see the image of transverse section of arm. So look at this thumb which is present on the lateral aspect. And here is the little finger on the medial aspect. And we can also see the medial epicondyle which is a bony landmark formed by the medial epicondyle of humerus. So let me show you the orientation to identify the structure seen. So just have a look at the shaft of the humerus. The shaft is more or less like a triangle. Means the posterior surface is almost flat. So you can see the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus is, sharp, is almost flat. And the anterior surface is tapering anteriorly here which is like more or less convex gives almost a triangular appearance. So any cross section can be identified with the bone. So the bone helps to understand the orientation of the specimen. So here the shaft of the humerus help us to understand which is anterior and posterior and this is the lateral side and medial side. So this is the cross section which is taken below the midway between the glenohumeral joint and elbow joint that is between the shoulder joint and elbow joint to show the compartments of arm. We can identify the transfer section is taken below midway because the section is below the attachment of deltoid. Here in this specimen we cannot see the deltoid as we know the deltoid attaches to the deltoid tuberosity which is present on the lateral side of the shaft of humerus and the coracobrachialis is on the medial aspect of the shaft of the humerus which inserts at the level of deltoid tuberosity. Absence of these two muscles explains that this section is taken just below the midway. We can clearly demarcate anterior and posterior compartments with the help of intermuscular septa. So here is the medial intermuscular septum and this is the lateral intermuscular septum. So medial side we can identify just by seeing this large neurovascular bundle which is present on the anterior medial aspect of the arm. And you can see muscle adherent to the shaft of the humerus both on anterior and posterior surface as well. So the muscle which is adherent to the anterior surface, this muscle is brachialis. So brachialis gets origin from lower part anterior surface of shaft of humerus and the muscle is which is superficial to brachialis is biceps brachii. Biceps brachii muscle have no attachment on the humerus. So as it gets origin from the scapula and inserts into the radial tuberosity of radius. So we can see the biceps brachii is superficial to brachialis with no attachment with the humerus. So let's see the posterior compartment. In the posterior compartment, the muscle bulk is formed by triceps. So it is important to know which is the medial head, lateral head and the long head of triceps. So first we shall understand the long head of triceps the long head of triceps is most superficial in the posterior compartment of arm with no attachment with the humerus. It is not having any attachment with the humerus because it gets origin from the scapula and inserts to the olecranon process of ulna. And the rest of the two heads are the lateral head, this is the lateral head and the muscle adherent is medial head. And in the posterior compartment near to the shaft that is near to the posterior lateral aspect we can see a neurovascular bundle. So the nerve here which is whitish in color which is quite closer to the shaft of the humerus is radial nerve. So this section we can say it is taken at the radial groove or the spiral groove which contains the radial nerve and profunda brachii vessels. So the vessels associated with the radial nerve are profunda brachii vessels which are in very close association with the shaft of the humerus. And one more thing to note is 
radial nerve is quite closer to the lateral intermuscular septum and it is just very close as it is going to pierce the lateral intermuscular septum and come forwards towards the lateral side of arm. We can also appreciate a big neurovascular bundle on anterior medial aspect which contains median nerve and along with the median nerve the vessels are brachial artery. So this is the brachial artery and we can also see the veins associated with the brachial artery and more medially just posterior to the intermuscular septum we can see one more nerve quite thicker called as the ulnar nerve. So ulnar nerve lies posterior to the medial intermuscular septum whereas the median nerve lies anterior to the medial intermuscular septum. So that's how you can identify most medially posterior to the intermuscular septum is the ulnar and median nerve is anterior to the intermuscular septum. So this completes the basic demonstration of cross section of arm. We shall see one more section to understand again. So here is the one more section. Now let us just revise once to identify the structures. So this is the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus which is flat and here is the anterior surface which is almost tapering giving a triangular appearance and we can see anterior medially. So this is the medial side a large neurovascular bundle and here posterolaterally a small neurovascular bundle. So this is the medial intermuscular septum and this would be the lateral intermuscular septum. So this is the triceps muscle, most superficial is the long head, then the medial head and lateral head. So this is the lateral head, this is the medial head of triceps and we can see the radial nerve here which is along the lateral intermuscular septum and the vessels here are the profunda brachii vessels which are along with the radial nerve. And let's understand the anterior compartment. Here is the superficial vein which is running anteriorly and we can see the biceps brachii which is most superficial and has no attachment with the humerus and this muscle which is adherent to the humerus is brachialis. And let's see the nerves here. So the nerve here which is along with the brachial artery is the median nerve and these are the brachial arteries along with its veins and here we can see the ulnar nerve posterior to the intermuscular septum and we can also appreciate medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. So thus now we can identify the arm in any section. Thank you.